Good morning. So uh, it's been a pretty overwhelming week. Super busy. I've done some travel. I've had a ton of hours that I've worked. I haven't gotten a chance to spend much time with my husband because he's on third shift. I'm missing my kid. Uh, so it's just been a very overwhelming week and that's just in my personal life, not to mention what's going on in the world right now. And I have a half hour commute home from work every night that I work in the salon and just uh, needing to feel encouraged. So I pulled up my Audible app and I started listening to a book that I've listened to a million times. Well, not quite literally, but I love this book. It's encouraging and inspiring and it has changed my life more than once. Every time I pick it up, it's like, ah, this is exactly what I needed in this moment. So the book is called Fervent by Priscilla Shire. It is a woman's battle plan for serious, specific, and strategic prayer. And anybody who hasn't checked out Priscilla Shire, I really encourage you to do so. She inspires and motivates, and she um, she does it from a Christian standpoint. She loves God. She loves Jesus. And everything that she speaks to is backed by scripture and it's a platform that she takes very serious and I have a lot of respect for her for the fact that she does keep everything biblically founded. Not all women on the same platform do that. Not that I'm putting them down. I just really, really appreciate that that's what she does. That That's her goal. Um, so this book has 10 strategies that the devil uses to attack us and it's ironic as I'm trying to make this video my camera on my computer keeps freaking out and not doing what it's supposed to so I'm gonna say that's an attack but we got this uh so the, she pulled a bunch of women and asked them what were ways that they felt the devil attacked them specifically and ironically enough a lot of them were the same and so she kind of made a list of the top 10 strategies that the devil uses and then she goes through so each chapter is a strategy and she goes through kind of how she has personally had to deal with that attack how she came through it and then what i love is at the very end she lists multiple scripture to reference and in the beginning of the book she encourages you to pray those scriptures because there is power in praying god's word and so uh, strategy number one, he attacks your passion. Strategy two, he attacks your focus. Three, he attacks your identity. Uh, let's see. Four, he attacks your family. Five, he attacks your confidence. Six, he attacks your calling. Seven, he attacks your purity. Eight, he attacks your rest and contentment. Nine, he attacks your heart. And 10, he attacks your relationships. So I don't know about you, but there have been multiple times in my life where I have felt attack on every single one of those. And what I love about this book, having the paperback copy, I love listening to her. I could listen to her all day long. But having the paperback copy, if I'm having a time like, I specifically remember feeling stuck in a rut and not knowing what I was gonna do with my life and what direction I needed to go and feeling like I was worthless and I didn't have anything to offer. And I was like, hmm. I think I read about that. That sounds really familiar. So I looked it up and sure enough, there's a chapter on that, your identity. And guess what? It was spot on. It helped me to find hope and it helped some clarity and it gave me specific verses to cling to in that time. And it helped me to get through that. And I have discovered when there have been issues between me and my husband where we're just getting on each other's nerves, not seeing eye to eye, the more I pray for him, the easier things get and the more my heart changes. So I stop being resentful and I want to be a light for Jesus in that minute. And it's amazing the difference that that alone makes. Um, one of my favorite parables that Jesus tells in the Bible is about the shrewd merchant. And that is Luke 16, 1 through 10. And it basically talks about how the, the boss 
um, finds out that his merchant has been dishonest and he basically says, hey, I want an accounting of all of your dealings and we're going to go through this and it's not going to be good for you. And the merchant's like, oh crap, like I'm going to lose my job. I'm going to get kicked out. I'm going to get exiled. What can I do to ensure that I'm still going to live a comfortable life when that happens? So he goes to all of the people that owe his boss money and say, hey, what do you owe this guy? Um, one guy says, 800 gallons of olive oil or something like that and he says okay instead change that and say you only owe 400 so i'm doing you a favor and they're like yeah like absolutely i'm gonna do that thanks man um so he was setting the stage to be comfortable when he was no longer going to be in the position he was in and at the end of this parable the boss man even has to admire the shrewdness of this guy. Like he put a lot of effort into taking care of himself. Uh, and at the end of it, Jesus basically says, if we pursued the kingdom of God with the same passion that the children of this world pursue profits and pleasure, we would live in an entirely different world. Those aren't my words. I totally stole them from David Guzik and the Blue Letter Bible. Um, if anybody has any questions about that, I would love to talk you through how you can set that up. And it's a great study guide and it's, it's a great opportunity to go more in depth into scripture. But uh, spiritual warfare is a big deal and it's real. And I know so many people who have battled it without even knowing that they battled it. And the Bible tells us, do not be afraid. We are supposed to go out in full force. We have the armor of God that we are supposed to put on. And you don't put on armor to sit around drinking lattes all day. You put on armor to go to war. And this is a strategic way that you can go to war against the attacks of the devil and um, against the shit storm that he's raising. And the other great thing that I love about the parable of the shrewd merchant is that it was a dishonest man that he was talking about and he wasn't glorifying the dishonest man. But um, in turn, Jesus was able to make an example that God can use the bad for his glory. He can use evil and take it and turn it around for good. And we have to cling to that. And being afraid isn't how we're gonna do that. So I just can't say enough about how this book has changed my life. And I really hope that if anybody out there is feeling hopeless and not sure what to do, that they give it a try and shoot. If you can't buy this book, you message me and I'll send it to you. Um, I'll also put a link in the bottom so that you can purchase it if you would like. So check it out. Uh, Luke 16, 1 through 10 is also the parable that I was discussing if you would like to check that out as well. Hope you guys have a great day and I will talk to you next time. Bye.